No one said it was going to be easy and at times I thought I was going to just have to hand in the towel. However, we finally did it. We won an eBay auction and what a deal we got. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club Callaway Razor Muscleback Irons. My first ever eBay auction winning set of clubs and I couldn't be happier and I can't wait to tell you exactly how much I paid for these and then how I've been getting on with them because we've done a couple of days now testing using these irons and um, well let's just say I'm very happy with them. So £160 is exactly what I paid for three to pitch in wedge um, and they're in really good condition. The grips are pretty much brand new. I even bought two new grips to then match up the set. I'll show you the three and four iron didn't come with similar grips. So I thought, you know what? I'll go on Amazon, I'll buy two grips, I'll put them on. I had a bit of mare this morning. We'll show you the footage. Basically, moral of the story, don't use cheap double-sided tape. And that's exactly what I did. And I got um, one of the grips stuck on at the three iron. Um, so I had to pull it off. And then I went up to the range. Um, uh, Lower Hennick does a lot of re-grips. Um, and I went and did it myself with proper double-sided the tape and I've put both of them on that is why now the Muppet that is me now has a tall velvet on the three iron and then all the other grips are now matching um but also I did find with the three iron which I didn't really realize when I bought them it hasn't got a KBS tour sticker on it just like this one has and the stepping profile in the shaft is actually quite different to this so I've got a feeling that three iron has been reshafted at a later date so I don't think I could sell it with a set anyway um uh, not that it kind of hides my absolute mare that I had in the morning Morning, and as you can tell I would have been quite stressed but the irons themselves are in great condition the 9 iron itself has been worn now these have obviously been used at a grass range and um, because you can see the wear marks on the 9 iron and a few of the other clubs up and down but overall condition wise very good I've obviously been putting them to the test I've been playing around sonning with my mate the other evening Sonning Golf Club is in exceptional condition and um, they've got fairway irrigation the place is just pristine I'll show you some of the shots now but these are bladed irons these are not forgiving. These are very much like the Mura irons. And um, when you hit one out the middle, it feels like butter. But it lets you know when you've hit a bad shot and a bad swing. And I'm going to show you quite a few bad shots as well as good shots around Sonning. And you don't normally think about Callaway when it comes to blades. For whatever reason, I just don't think you do. You think about distance, you think about power, you think about forgiveness, offset. Blades, for me personally, I'm thinking about Mizuno, I'm thinking about Strixen, I'm thinking about Titleist. Um, uh, especially when you think about old school clubs. But this razor wasn't even on my radar. I didn't even realize this was an actual club when it did come out. Um, uh, but it's very much on my radar now. And as I say, 160 for a full set of clubs. Obviously, I've re-gripped um, two of the clubs. They did cost me £7 um, for the grips. And I'm a big fan of these lambkins. They are really nice. Um, uh, but overall, in terms of performance-wise, these are true lofts. They're not going to give you a massive amount of distance. Um, and they are very clean. But even the shots I was hitting with the pitching wedge, it just feels like a pitching wedge. Like most vokies or most like gap wedges, whatever you want to call them, I could hit a nice 40-yard pitch shot and it's going to stop on a dime i'll show you a few of the shots that i hit around sonning with it as well as flighting these irons were beautiful the best shot of the day was on one of the last holes that i filmed i had a six iron it's like 170 or maybe 168 into the wind i said i was going to hit this punch shot and it never left the flag and that is why you buy blades for that one shot of the entire round that you call either left to right or right to left high low low spinning high spinning whatever it is and you execute it you feel like one of the best golfers to ever live now obviously you realize on the next hole when you dunch thin and everything else that you are not one of the best golfers to ever live but they do give you that brief glimpse of just amazing control over the golf ball 
when you do execute those shots. Now this set does come with a three iron. As I said at the start of the video, I don't know what shaft it came in, but I imagine it's a stiff leg shaft and I hit some outrageous shots with this three iron. There's a short par four around Sonning. I can't remember what hole it was. It's about 270, something like that. Wind was helping and I flighted this three iron, bearing in mind I slapped it on the two previous holes so well it went out the back. And that's when it comes down to a three iron, this thing looks like a knife. It doesn't look forgiving, but when you hit a good one, it really doesn't matter what is behind it. As long as it's out the middle, that ball speed is gonna get transferred from that club head. And again, as I said with that six iron, and you hit a punch shot, when you hit a bladed iron and the shot is executed well, there is no better feeling. Um, and no, I would not put that three iron in the bag. I'd probably stop at the four iron with this set and have, again, my two iron Strixen, because I don't think that three iron would necessarily give me a better score or anything to my game but it's nice to do every now and again and I'll give you a sneak peek of exactly what you will be seeing over the next coming days we did a bit of a challenge video we built two bags our second hand clubs and we went out and played some golf very similar to a format that we're all familiar with on YouTube and uh, basically it's the Tesco value version of that um, but these were the irons that we both hit we actually split the irons down the middle because my stock levels with irons at the moment is quite low everything's sold um, and again it was an interesting matchup, but both of us agreed in terms of iron wise, they just look so clean. Like the grooves themselves are actually very close together, very small grooves as well. And I just like the clean, sharp look that they give you when you're addressing the golf ball. And when it comes down to blades or old blades, I should say, it's all about condition. Like there's not much technology that can go into blades that have really changed over the last 15 years as long as the condition's good and it's got a shaft that's going to be quite similar to your swing speed and the faces aren't turned up too much i can't really see how you're going to see much difference of flushing 15 year old blade now to a blade that's coming out this year the question is flushing it all together so how did i know these were going to be a good deal and i get this question a lot how do i value my irons how do i value how much they should be worth especially if they're quite specific and obviously there's not a lot of these out on the market at the moment how did i know that 160 is a great price for three to pitch image in these irons it comes down to a few factors number one eight irons for 160 i mean that's 20 pound a club in the condition that they are like you can't go wrong the grips are also in fantastic condition. Like the grips are worth seven pounds each times eight. And the shaft, label, sticker, everything else, you have confidence in knowing that you're not gonna lose money on a purchase like this. I think the most times I sell clubs in terms of irons and drivers, there is a flat line when it comes to golf. A set of irons between 100 and 200 pounds is always gonna sell because you can play golf with them. Not only that, these are exceptionally good looking and in good condition, so I know that potentially I'm going to be able to get more for them than what I paid for. As soon as you start inflating prices and you're buying certain sets, like I see a lot of sets at the moment, um, uh, like your Titleist T100s or your G410s, and they're six, seven hundred pounds second hand, I'm just thinking, why? Why are you spending six, seven hundred pounds on not getting fitted when you could probably buy a G30 or G20 that you're still not getting fitted for, but it's going to be 200 pounds, 250 pounds for a set of irons. 100 pounds for a driver, 200 pounds for a set of irons. They're kind of my max purchases for anything, whether it's Callaway, Titleist, Ping, because it still holds a value. You have a driver head, you have a set of irons, you can play golf with them, and hopefully they're somewhat suited to your swing. So guys, there you have it. Callaway Razor Blade irons. I thought I'd share that with you because that is my first eBay auction that I've ever won ever and i was very excited i'm glad these were the first purchase that i actually got let me know in the comments down below what you thought of these irons the look the aesthetics and um, leave this video a like if you liked it subscribe if you are new catch you guys there